And now let's talk about normalize. But before we talk about the method, let's talk about why do we need it first. So Unicode assigns a single code bound for each character. For example, A, this is its code bound. But sometimes it assigns more than a code bound for a single character. For example, a C with the Cedella has this Unicode. So it's a single code bound. But then you can also use the code for C and code for the Cedella combined. You're going to get this one here, this C with the Cedella. So in JavaScript, when I assign this code here to a string one, I'm going to get this character here when I console log it. And then if I assign this two codes here, this two code parents to a string two, I'm going to get the same character. So both the strings here have the same visual appearance, but they don't have the same code parent. So when you go and compare these two strings here, you're going to get false. And when you compare the length also, then you're going to get false because the length of the string number one is one and the length of the string two here is two. This one has a character, a single character. This one here has two characters. And this is where the problem will come. So for an end user, this two here looks the same. But for your app, for example, they are not the same. So for example, if the user searches for this character and you're using this character, your app will not return the result your user was looking for. So that's why we need to use normalize. So let's talk about the syntax. So you can call normalize on your string and normalize doesn't change your original string. So it will return a new string with the normalization done. Well, you can pass in some arguments here. If none was passed, this parameter here called form Unicode normalization form will be by default set to NFC. And this stands for canonical decomposition followed by canonical composition. You can also use NFT that stands for canonical decomposition. Well, let's go and see some examples. So we have our strings here, string one from before and string two. So when you render this, they will have the same visual appearance. So a C with the Cedella, a C with the Cedella. While this in the background, it's a composed from C and this Cedella symbol. So when I call code bound at on my string one at position zero, because this one here has one for the length, so it has only one character. So code bound at zero will get us the code point for this character here. So this will return 199. And then for this one here, I'm going to call code bound at zero and code bound at one because this has two characters. So at zero, this is the code for C, which is 67. And at one, this is the code for the Cedella, which is 87 or 807. So you can see here again that this one here has a single code parent. And this one here is composed of two code parents, one for C and one for Cedella. Well, that's why we need to use normalization. So I'm going to go and use NFC and NFT. So if I call string one dot normalize without any arguments, in that case, form will be by default NFC here. So I don't have even to pass in NFC. So NFC stands for canonical decomposition followed by canonical composition. What this means is that it will go and decompose this first. So this will then look like this one after decomposition and then it will compose it. So going back to the character here, a single character. So if I then call string one that length, this will return one. If I then call code pound at zero, this will return 199. Well, before we move on to string two, when we call string one that normalize, this will not actually change string one. I said that before, but actually it will go and return a new string normalized. But let's say that new string normalized is assigned to string one. So string one now is overwritten. Well, let's move on to string two that normalize. And again, because I didn't pass in any arguments here. So by default form will be set to NFC. So 
the composition followed by composition. So it will go and decompose this character. So it's already decomposed and then do the composition. So composing this means that I'm going to use another Unicode that will give me the same results as these two codes, which is this one here. So if I take a look now on the string to that length, I'm going to get one which is not the case before doing the normalization. So here we have a length of two. Now we have the length set to one. And then if I go and call code pound add zero, I'm going to get the same code pound here. And now you can see that my string one and string two are the same after normalization. So now if I check string one equals string two, that's going to be true. Now let's go and see the NFT, the example here with NFT. So if I call string one dot normalize NFT, this means canonical decomposition. So it will go and decompose this, which means that my character here will now be represented with two code parents. So if I go now and call string one that length, this will return two. And the same thing for string two, if I call length, this will return two. I will uh, see with the cedilla here, this string two is already decomposed. After decomposition, it will keep the same length. So now if I call code pound add zero on my string number one, it will get 67. That's the code for a C letter. And if I call code pound add one, that will return the code pound for uh, the cedilla symbol here. The same thing for uh, string two, code pound add zero will return 67, code pound add one will return 807. And again, if you compare the two strings, string one and string two, that will return true. Well, that's again some tiny examples of how normalize works. I hope this made you learn something new. Well, don't forget to subscribe, like uh, the video and let's move on to the next method.